is pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our mistakes. But our Lord and Savior Jesus still chooses us each day. We may walk the earth unworthy, but through Him we are made whole. He can heal the brokenhearted and mend the physical. Transgressions crushed for our mistakes, but our Lord and Savior Jesus still chooses us each day. We may walk the earth unworthy, but through Him we are made whole. He can heal the brokenhearted and mend the physical. We don't always have.
God bless your family. We want to say it's a happy day. We want to thank you for joining us for our live stream service today. Uh, we are so grateful to be able to live stream here from our lovely sanctuary. And this is the day that the Lord had made, and we want to rejoice and be glad in it. We've got a great um, time, a great service planned for you today. And I'm going to be ministering from a, a word that the Lord had placed on my heart entitled, It's Too Late. I'm already blessed. We want to, before we go into our praise and worship and our giving, we want to thank all of our first responders and those that are continuing to serve and put their, themselves in harm's way, and um, our teachers and our uh, medical professionals, nurses and doctors, and, and uh, transportation and hospitality. We want to thank you. We're praying for you. We also want to say that we're praying for uh, all of you who are listening to this live stream and you are at this moment perhaps maybe quarantined and uh, in isolation, you're going through your 10, 14 days, we're praying for you as well. God's going to raise you up. And this is, this is our desire that the, the healing virtue of our Lord will reach out to you on today. We are so grateful indeed. And I want to thank all of those who volunteered yesterday and those who planned and executed our annual Compassionate Feast. We, uh, we look forward to this time every year where we are just able to do something uh, for, you know, for and with the community. We partner with Christian Services and TJ Duckett and uh, Kroger and so many different sponsors. And on yesterday, we were able to feed um, our 100 boxes went out and were able to feed over 600 people on yesterday. So I thank God for Epicenter. Thank you for uh, your diligence and your continued support as we reach out and 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 serve our community. If we're not serving, if we're not serving the community, then we we're missing the mark. I pray that as we go into this Thanksgiving week, that you would be wise and and uh, really think about your future. And you know, as I heard someone say, we make small sacrifices so that we can have a big future. So I know we miss our families and we want to be together, but I, I don't think it would be a bad deal if we just, um, you know, activated some wisdom during this time and, and enjoy those that are around us so that when COVID-19 has been totally conquered, we're able to really get together. One of our major Christian organizations here in the United States have lost over 48 bishops have passed away due to COVID-19. Forty, over 48 bishops have passed away, which means you have churches, you have families, you have, you have, you know, communities that are in mourning, and that's just one organization. So again, over 220-something thousand Americans have died due to COVID-19. So we've got we've to come together, and I just want to send this message. We've got to come together, and we've got to pray, but we also have to get up off of our knees, and we've got to walk out the commandments of God in faithfulness and diligence and wisdom. Amen. So, again, thank you for uh, all of you all who are continuing to support us. And when I say support us, I'm talking about supporting each other, those that are sick and those that are shut in and and then there are those of you who are actually in a season of tremendous blessing. And so you've been able and you've been generous and you've shared what God has blessed you with with others. I'm so grateful today for all that God has done. And so I want to invite you today uh, to lift your hands up. Let's worship the Lord. Giving is a part of our worship. And God had a divine economic strategy for Israel when they came out of Egypt. Because uh, where God was taking them, there would never be any lack. So giving was not something that you would ever have to encourage anybody to do. Uh, it was, it was uh, a part of the culture of worshiping and loving God. That when you love God, you love your community. And as a matter of fact, you love God as you reach through people. You can't touch God unless you go through somebody. And so... Uh, it, one day I'll go through God's economic strategy and how, um, you know, our mentality needs to needs to go up to a whole nother level and that God really um, has done some amazing things for us. 
And when we see what God has done for us, it really takes us to a whole another level. So I'm going to ask you to get ready to uh, give, and then we're going to move into our praise and worship, and then we'll come back for the word of the Lord for today. God bless you. Let's go ahead and let's give. We would like to invite you to participate in giving and contributing to our ministry as we work to spread the gospel around the world. You can join us through our website at epworship.com and click the giving tab. Also, if you are a texter, you can text to give through Tidely. The number is one 371 0374 Type give in the message line. Your contributions, free will offerings, allow us to bless children, minister to those who are on the margins of our society, and again to spread the gospel around the world. We thank you for your generosity. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Come on, let's clap our hands. Working power in the blood of the Lamb. 
We would like to invite you to participate in giving and contributing to our ministry as we work to spread the gospel around the world. You can join us through our website at epworship.com and click the giving tab. Also, if you are a texter, you can text to give through Tidely. The number is 1-833-371-0374. Type give in the message line. Your contributions, free will offerings, allow us to bless children, minister to those who are on the margins of our society, and again to spread the gospel around the world. We thank you for your generosity. God bless your family. I want to thank you for, again, joining our live stream services. I want to minister to you today from a very simple word from Genesis chapter number 9. I I think it would be great if you read 9 and 10. And we won't have time to go through all of the nuances that the scripture um, is highlighting, highlighting. In and through these verses, but I do want to lift up a thought for you today that I want you to be encouraged. And um, in Genesis chapter 9, verses 1 through 5, and then we're also going to read, <clears throat> we're going to go down and we're going to read uh, verses 20 through 23. In Genesis chapter 9, verses 1 through 5, and then verses 20. Through 23. The Bible reads as such So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, and, and the fear of you and the dread of you will be upon every beast of the earth, upon every bird of the air, on all that move on the earth, and on all the fish in the sea. I'm giving you total dominion, like I did Adam. He goes on to say, they are given into your hand. Help me, God. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. I have given you all things as the green herbs. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, which means don't eat flesh that got blood in it. You kill the animal, you cook the meat, but you don't consume the blood because the blood has life. And he says that is its blood. Because when you consume blood, it is to God, you are consuming life. Because anything that doesn't have any blood, any mammal, human, that doesn't have blood is not alive. That's why we have to make sure we keep a healthy heart. And so God says, I'm going to give you the permission to eat meat. But, 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 But if you eat meat, make sure that you're not consuming blood. And then he goes on in verses 5 and 7 and really talks about it. But uh, I want to reach down to verse 20 and 23 and read these verses. And Noah began to be a farmer. This is post-flood. Noah began to be a farmer and he planted a vineyard. 
Then he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. And that would be Shem and Japheth. But Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. Verse 24, I got to read it. So Noah awoke awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. Then he said, cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants, he shall be to his brethren. And he said, blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth and May he dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. I want to minister from a subject today. Uh, It's too late. I'm already blessed. Someone told me one time, one of my mentors, and we were talking about, um, you know, life, and he said that if a lie is told over and over, Eventually, that lie becomes someone's, some nations, some states, some cities' truth. And I'm afraid today that um, a lie has been told. When we look here in um, Genesis chapter number 9, verse 24, and all the way down here, we see that uh, Noah curses the, the, the son of Ham, Canaan. It is in this verse that for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, it was viewed that the descendants of Ham were cursed by Noah. That they were cursed so much so until... From this one verse, slavery, chattel slavery, uh, racism, and all of the other discriminatory practices and policies, even those who were famous authors and psychologists referenced this verse to conclude that those who were and are the descendants of Ham, were cursed to be slaves on the earth. That's a lie. When we look here in the scripture, we find something very different than what those have projected. That's a lie. Look at somebody and say, that is a lie. It is amazing how we can take a scripture And make that scripture say whatever we want it to say. But that's not what God is saying. The first thing here is very important to know that um, whenever you go through a season of difficulty in your life. And uh, things have shifted around. Noah has and his three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. These three sons and their wives, the scripture says that eight went into the ark. Eight souls. I love it went the way the Bible says it. It says eight souls went into the ark. And the, and the number eight is the number of new beginnings. And so they went into the ark and after the waters had abated, the Bible says that uh, Noah and his three sons came out of the ark. This is chapter nine that I'm in. And begin to say, uh, I bless you. One of the things I want you to really understand here is that you cannot have a lie unless there is an element of truth first. Truth has to come. There has to be something true in order for there to be a lie. 
a truth comes first before a lie. You don't get a lie and then truth. And the reason why I say that is because when we look at the scripture, it was God who spoke truth first. And then Satan came later as the father of a lie. You see, Satan don't really have anything to say unless God speak first. Satan has nothing really, he has no depth in him. He has no purpose without God. He is the father of a lie. Scripture lets us to know that God is the author of peace and the author of truth. And so when God speaks a thing and, 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 and conveys to humanity his intent for it, Satan then comes now and he now has a platform in order to speak because Satan cannot speak unless God speak first. And so Satan now has his ministry on the back of God's truth. So I need you to understand that if there's any area, if there's anything that the enemy is lying about, you need to fully begin to shout because that means that God has spoken a truth before the lie. Noah and his sons come off the ark and the Bible says that in verse uh, 1 through 5 that God blessed them. I want to say to you today that you are blessed. That's the first word. That's, that's it. That when God speaks, nothing else can alter that. I want you to know that no matter what man says, God will never allow a man to reverse what he has already declared. Look at somebody and tell them, uh, it's too late now. I'm already blessed. By the time Noah had expressed his discontent in the situation and then attempts now to curse. And, and what some have said that, that Noah cursed uh, the people of Ham. But, but it came after verses 1 through 5 where God originally spoke and blessed Noah and the sons uh, and his three sons. The Bible says the blessing came and God said, I want, I want to bless you. I want to, I want to bless you. I want you to embrace God's blessing. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what any textbook say. God has blessed you and I. And I'm talking all of us. He says, I want you to be number one, to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. He gives them the same blessing that Adam and Eve received in the garden. When God brought Adam and Eve out of chaos, n notice now, notice this, the symbolism and, and the parallels that Genesis opens up with water, a flood. The scripture says that the, that the water, the waters had covered the faces of the deep and there was darkness. And so there evidently was a flood. You're not hearing what I'm saying. And God steps in the midst of the flood and the waters are called to abate. And out of the waters, then you begin to see dry land. You begin to see vegetation. You begin to see God put everything back together. And then God plants the man and the woman and says to them, as a result of this flood, be fruitful and multiply and refill the earth. God bless them. That blessing then, now once you get the blessing on your life, here comes the enemy. I want to say to you that, that the presence of the devil in and around, and I'm talking about chaos, and I'm talking about evil, I'm talking about all the little things that he liked to stir up. He don't show up until the blessing come first. And so you need to recognize that, that oftentimes we get discouraged because it seems as if evil, someone is always talking negative and things are always chaotic in our lives and what's going on. But the presence of the devil means that God has already shown up, that God has already spoken a word that he is attempting to reverse so that it could get down into your heart and into your mind and you can begin to move away from the things of God. But it's too late now. I'm already blessed. 
You can say what you want to. You can, you can come on the scene, Johnny, come late if you want to. But as long as the word has been spoken out of the mouth of God, that's all I'm concerned about. When God speaks first, that's the only thing I'm required to listen to. Somebody put your hands together and give God some praise. Yeah, it's too late now. I'm already blessed. I'm already blessed. And so God gives Noah and his sons and their wives the same blessing that he gave over to Adam and to Eve. He says, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. The first thing is, is that when God places a blessing over your life, no man can reverse it. When God speaks a word over your life, no man can reverse it. It doesn't matter how favored that man is. It doesn't matter how anointed that man is. It doesn't matter how called that man is, how appointed that man is. It doesn't matter how famous that man is or that woman is. When God speaks a word of blessing over your life, it is irreversible. It is even irreversible by God because when God speaks, he cannot reverse his word. He said that my word has gone out of my mouth and it shall not return unto me void for it shall accomplish that for which I have sent it. It shall not come back and say I couldn't get it done. When God speaks a word, the devil himself will try to reverse that word. He'll try to get you to not believe that word. But if God put a blessing over your life, it's done. In the name of Jesus, we have to understand this. Give me a little more monitor right here. We have to understand this. We have to understand that the blessing, the first thing that comes with the blessing is the fact that God gives you the anointing to multiply. He gives you more than what you need. He, he puts more in you than you could ever imagine. He puts more in you than you could ever measure. There's a measure of God uh, through the Spirit of God that had been downloaded into us that we could never even measure. And it's Satan's job to try to get us to not believe what God has said. Oh, help me, God. He says, I want you to be fruitful and multiply some people are fruitful but they don't have the they don't know about the multiplication that God don't just want you to just be fruitful which means to be effective he wants you to be effective but he also wants you to be able to duplicate that effectiveness he wants you to be able to spread out he wants to enlarge your coast you see some people took what Noah said and placed it over what God had already said but by the time Noah spoke God had already said I blessed him I blessed him and I blessed Japheth the blessing was already out it was already moving the blessing was when God speak it activates something in your spirit when God speak it activates something in your womb when God speaks it activates something within the DNA of your reproductive process and even in those that you've not reproduced yet that same word has been downloaded into them help me God he says be fruitful and multiply and feel so the first thing is that the blessing comes with effectiveness the blessing comes with the ability to multiply, reproduce, reproduce godliness, reproduce success, reproduce a winner's mentality, reproduce next level, after level, after level, reproduce something to create what nobody's ever seen before, reproduce, write the book, open the business. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Go on and get the degree. Go on and do what God told you to do. You got the blessing over your life. Second thing that the blessing does, it comes with favor and fear. Scripture says that the first part here in Genesis 9 was the favor part. But what other people won't tell you is, is that the blessing also comes with fear. He says, because I have given you dominion, over the animals. Now listen, prior to the flood, God had not given man the permission to eat meat. Man had a plant-based diet. 
But after the flood, God opened up the dietary restriction and said, now you can eat meat. You're not hearing what I'm saying. And with that blessing came fear. What he said here is, is that I've put fear and dread into, into the beast, into the birds, into the fish, and to everything that is up under your auspice, everything that is, uh, that is with, uh, up under your feet, which means now you've got the dominion, but ain't nothing going to simply submit to you, which means that you've got the, you've got the favor, but there's some things that you got to go get. You tell me how, how many people go into the woods and try to sit all day and sit all all night up in the trees to, to shoot a deer. Why? Because the deer has the fear of man. Fish, you got to sit on the fish bank all day long with your pole in the water trying to catch a fish that's running from you. What am I saying to you? I'm saying that when you get the blessing of God over your life, there are some things that belong to you but they won't submit to you until you go and get it. And that's what Satan don't want. He don't want you to recognize that the things that ain't submitted don't mean it don't belong to you it just means you gotta go get it you gotta rise up and you gotta say this belongs to me Jesus has opened up the way for us to have what God have promised for us so you get favor and you get fear so don't become shocked when people are intimidated by your presence fear 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 I told somebody the other day that we're at a level where we ain't trying to get no job. You're not hearing what I'm saying. When you go on a job interview, I'm the blessing, which means that I'm not trying to get a job because I've already got the job. The blessing was already spoken, which means I don't need to come in like you giving me anything. I'm coming in as a consultant of the Most High God. I'm coming in with the sagacity of the Holy Spirit. I'm coming in because I'm uniquely, wonderfully made. I'm coming in because this organization will be blessed to have somebody who's praying for them. It's blessed to have somebody on boy who got a godly worldview. I want to say it's too late. I'm already blessed. It is here that he says I give you the fear. Everything that's under your authority is afraid of you. Isn't it funny how in this realm that we live in most of us we run from things that's supposed to be running from us. We respect things that we are never supposed to respect. We, we, we are afraid of things that are afraid of us. And that's because a lie has been told. This lie has been released since the beginning. And this lie has affected. It's affected the way we live. It's affected the way we worship. It's affected the way we be in relationships. But what I want to say to you is that it's too late, Satan. I'm already blessed. You can say what you want. You can use any kind of situation against me. But it's too late. God already spoke into my life. Let me say this here. It is here that uh, in verse 5 and 7, he says, For I have created all men in my image. Did I make man? Verse 7. And as for you, he says it a second time in verse 7, Be fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply in it. I feel something breaking in my life. I don't know about you, but I've been, I've been, I've been trying to break out. I've been trying to break free from the limitations that exist in my mind. And there are times in our lives where somebody fed us some wrong theology. There are times in our lives where somebody fed us uh, some, some wrong spiritual food. And we don't believe that the things that God have created are for us. We don't believe that we have access to, that we have the right to health care. We have the right to, to be healed. We got the right to have shalom in our minds. We don't have the right to be wealthy and to, to be able to take care of all of our responsibilities. When we are supposed, that's our right. That's what God gave us. That's the blessing. It comes with multiplication, filling, and purpose, and effectiveness. That's what God gave us. Help me, Holy Ghost. It is here in this scripture, sons of Japheth, 
They are the fathers of the Indo-European people stretching from India to the shores of Western Europe. They are connected linguistically. They are those of the Germanic people. Those would include the French, the Spanish, and the Celtic uh, settlers. It would also include the Russians. It is here in the scripture, Ham sees his father and uh, uh, that his father has, has been drinking and he is now naked in his private quarters. Now, it is Ham who we know if we follow it out, he is the father of those from the African nations to the far east. Those who, are, who, who, who created great empires in Ethiopia and in Babylon. It is uh, those who are from Libya and those who settled in Israel. It's right here in the scripture. You have to look at it right here in verse 21, 22, all down through here. And so it is the, the sons of Japheth, then the sons of Ham, that, uh, that, 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 that they say that they are the black folks. And so there are those who say, number one, that uh, these black folks, these sons of Ham from Africa and Ethiopia, from uh, Nigeria and from the Congo and from Liberia and from Mozambique and from Sudan and from all of the other places. Are you hearing what I'm see? What I'm saying that they are cursed and this lie have been spread across the earth. Uh, in so much now that when you look around, we have a defeated mentality because somebody told you a lie. But I want to reverse the lie and say before the lie ever dropped, God had already dropped the blessing. Before the lie was ever written, God had already written the word of God to say that all men are created equal. We all have the divine plan of God over our lives. I got to pause. I'm getting too excited. I'm getting so excited I got to pause here. It is here now. That the blessing comes with favor and fear. The Bible lets us to know that oftentimes what hinders the favor and the blessing of God is family situations. It is believed that, not, that Noah's nakedness was not just merely that he got drunk and somehow just frivolously uh, you know, became naked. But, but that, that there's a suggestion here, and I'm, I'm, I'm laying this out as a suggestion that there was maybe some sexual abuse. There was some kind of family abuse that he became uncovered. That something happened within the family. You're not hearing what I'm saying. That, that, that a mistakes was made. Some boundaries perhaps was crossed. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. And what Satan likes to do is to take your family history. He likes to take the mistakes that you've made. He likes to take the background, the messiness of your background, and use it psychologically against you to believe uh, that because we've got some baggage in the family, because we've got some things uh, that we're not proud of, that maybe that nullifies the glory of God. Maybe that negates what God have originally said. But I come to tell you, Jesus said over there in John, great God Almighty, he said, I love the world and I'm going to die for everybody, which means that whatever has happened in your past it does not override the blessing of God in your present and in your future what am I trying to say to you I'm trying to say to you that there were some family things that happened in their lives and God said and Noah woke up out of his wine and said cursed be Canaan now think about this it was Ham that saw his father's nakedness. But when Noah woke up, he said, cursed be Canaan. But Ham was the one that saw you, Noah. Why would you take it out on the grandson descendants? Why? Why? Is that justice? Do the sins of the father the, the war wear off on the sons and the grandsons and the great grands? No, that's not the justice of God. You're not hearing what I'm saying. No, no, no. No, they took that out of context. They took that out of context. What I'm trying to say to you is that this scripture has nothing to do with the cursing of an ethnos. It has, it has nothing to do with the cursing of an entire continent or people. It has everything to do with one situation because you can 
can never nullify the blessing of God that comes first. Every time there is a major catastrophe in your life, like a COVID-19, like a 2020, this is the reason why I'm bringing this message to you. It's because God will never let you go through a storm. And then when the storm is over, he don't renounce, he don't re repeat and affirm the blessing that was over your life before the storm ever hit. Why? Because when we go through oftentimes, we think everything has changed. But what God says is the storm might have changed your environment, but it didn't change my heart towards you. The storm might have changed everything else, but it never changed the word. It never changed my plan and my purpose and my process for your life. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Man is always trying to curse somebody. But you need to know this morning, you need to know today, that God never delegates. He never delegates the cursing of a person to another man. Man can't curse you. Once God bless you, and man can't bless you if God curse you. Hmm. Uh, uh, I was thinking about, I was thinking this morning about how I'm, a, I'm an accident. Oh, God, help me. Can I preach here? Uh, uh, I was thinking this, this morning as I was just in the bed, I was in tears thinking how my mom met my father at a beach party. I, they didn't have no family planning. There weren't no, no Lamar, is it Lamar's, Lamar's classes. They didn't go to no class and where they, oh, 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 teaching people how to breathe and, and, and oh, isn't this cute? No, uh-uh. No, they got together on, on a situation, a hookup, a beach hookup, a Florida hookup. Y'all are hearing what I'm saying. And at the end of the hookup, there was a seed that was planted. I was an accident. And, and in other words, they didn't plan to have me. But, 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 but God had already spoken a word you're not hearing what I'm saying and so because I was merely a, a, an unplanned event in their mind that has nothing to do with what God had already let me tell you something up in here that you might be an accident to your parents but you are a divine purpose by God your parents might have not have never seen you they might have not have never planned for you to be here but God because you're here now it's too late devil I'm already blessed Oh God, help me now. We have to understand this. And I was thinking this morning how my entire life I've never fit in anywhere. Never fit in. Never fit in. Church, went to college, looked at all the fraternities, didn't see anything that I could fit in with. Everywhere I went, it didn't fit in. I always either started something new or something happened around me. And so the point I'm trying to make is we let these things play in our minds. And we live in a world, we live in a nation where we devalue people based upon their economic status. We devalue people based upon their gender. We devalue people based upon their color. We devalue people based upon where they stay. We devalue people. We devalue. But let me tell you right now, God has put a blessing over you. God has spoken a blessing over you, and the devil is angry about it. He wants you to sob. He wants you to get down on yourself. I want to say that even when you ain't performing like you want to on your job, the blessing is still alive. You got to go get it. You got to go run after that deer. You got to go run after that fish. They're not going to submit to you. They got to be afraid of you. Your next level is running from you because it knows that when you catch it, you got it because the blessing is upon your life. Israel comes through one of the greatest trials of their life and they're going into their blessing and in Numbers chapter 23, verse 8, Balaam, the king of Balak, the king of Moab, tried to get the prophet Balaam to curse the people. He said, they're too mighty for me. Hallelujah. I'm afraid of them. They, 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 everywhere they go, they succeeded. Everything they put their hands on, they overcome. And the only thing that I know that can stop them from overtaking me is a curse. So he sends for a prophet to come and curse them. 
And the prophet comes, and this is what he says in Numbers 23 and 8. He says, how can I curse those whom God have blessed? How can I denounce those whom God has not denounced? I can't curse what God has already blessed. You come after the fact, devil. You should have you, you done something different. But because you exist because of truth, then that means I don't need to pay attention to the lie. I need to rejoice in the truth of God about who I am and who we are supposed to be in him. Numbers 23 verse 8 says, how can I curse whom God has not cursed, and how can I denounce whom God has not denounced? We see this theme being repeated all throughout the Scripture, that every time God gets ready to move into somebody's life and moving them into their destiny, Satan shows up with a lie. You're not hearing me. Jesus in the wilderness, Satan shows up with a lie. And Jesus responds to him with the word. It is written. How oh, glory be to God. Oh. He, said, he said the blessing was already here. It was already written before you open your mouth. You all, the blessing is already here. It's written. We see this theme over and over and over. Satan releases a lie on the back of God's truth. We even see it in Acts chapter 10, where an Italian man who'd been praying, looking for his next level, and God says, your next level is with a, with a Jew preacher, a preacher that's a Jew, a, messi a messianic Jew. But the problem that the messianic Jew has, he's got some prejudice in his heart, Acts chapter 10. And he sees a sheep that is let down from heaven. And inside of that sheep is full of animals of every kind. And the voice inside of the dream that Peter has in Acts 10 says, get up, Peter, and eat. And Peter responds, I have never eaten anything that is unclean. And the voice says to Peter, which is God, do not call anything that I have created unclean. While he's pondering this, there's a knock on the door. It is the men, the messengers from Cornelius' house beckoning him to come to those whom the culture says whites don't mix with blacks. Jews don't mix with Italians. Jews don't mix with Gentiles. You're not hearing what I'm saying. And when, he, when Peter gets to Cornelius' house, he understands the dream, that the dream was not about food. It was about the lie that had been released all the way back in Genesis about the value of some people. Because the Jewish Christians didn't believe that the Gentiles were, were eligible for the kingdom like they were. And the scripture says that when Peter went into Cornelius, now watch me, follow me now. When he went into Cornelius' house, the Bible says Cornelius had gathered all his family and friends. He, Peter, for the first time, was in an ethnically different congregation. And he was struggling with that. And then he says, I perceive that God have no respect of persons. Hallelujah. He was still battling the lie, even though he was saved. And the scripture says that while Peter yet spoke these words and, and preached the gospel, the Holy Spirit fell. In other words, God did it the same way in Acts 10, the way he did it in Acts chapter 2, 38. Because God would not allow another man to put his hands on them. That blessing had to come from heaven. Because when men bless you, they can take it away. But when God put his hands on you, when God fall on you, then Peter had to look around and say, they've got it just like we did. And God loves everybody. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? This lie that had been released has affected many of us. Absolutely all of us. And God is saying today, break free from it. 
break free from the curse in your mind that you can't achieve because you're a female or you are a woman or you are a youth or you are black or you are Asian or you are this. They got all these categories. In God, we are his children. And the blessing is over our life. And I believe what God is saying to us as we come out of this, he's saying just as the sons of Noah left that ark, got the favor and the fear, go forth. Don't you let 2020 take everything. Don't you let 2020 push you in the bed. You jump up out the bed today, you get fully dressed. You hear what I'm saying? You get fully dressed, fully dressed, and let the enemy know it's too late. I'm already blessed. So I bless God for you today. I bless God for you. It's time for us to break free from the lies and the schemes and all the things that the enemy have put out. It's not true. God already blessed you. May the Lord bless you, and we'll see you on the next time. Much love to you. We pray this message has blessed you. If you would like to give your life to Jesus, and you've been looking for God, looking for something more meaningful, and you want to get rid of the pain and move into the joy and the prosperity of life through Christ Jesus, I want to offer you that today. We all need God, and Jesus Christ died for you specifically, and He offers you eternal life. He also offers a better life. Now the Bible says, we should believe in our hearts that Christ was raised from the dead, and through that faith, it becomes a defining moment. Angels rejoice, and heaven becomes yours today. So if you are listening to me today, and you want to cross that line, please join me in saying this prayer and receiving Christ in your life. Dear Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I thank you for dying on the cross. For me, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God. I believe you are the Lord and that God raised you from the dead. Please forgive me of my sins, wash my heart, come live in my life, and be the Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, teach me to walk with you, and to live for the rest of my life. Thank you for saving me and giving me the gift of eternal life in heaven with you. Amen. Friends, if you have said that prayer, I say to you that you are saved. Jesus Christ is now Lord of your life. Please contact us so that we can send you your Believer's Survivor's Kit. May God bless you. May the Lord bless you today. We are so grateful. I want you to take this word with you. And uh, I'm going to try to go through this in detail with you because when I break this out about the sons of Noah and really give you more detail it is going to shake many of your minds of how deep the blessing runs in the veins of God's children. I want you to hear me. Prophetically, God is saying, I'm healing you of the infection of the lies. God says, I want to bring you to another level. And my point of never fitting in is because I was operating under the, the lies in my mind. That, that, that I'm an accident, that I'm not supposed to be here. I was not planned. And so every time someone challenges or, or criticizes, it, it, it awakens that. But in the name of Jesus today, I want to say to you, I want to say to you that the Spirit of God is going to begin to hush the voice of the lies. And God is going to say to you today, he's saying to you today, that whatever's happening in your past, whatever's happening in your past, whatever's happened in your past, it is done. God says, I'm in your future. May the Lord bless you today. And I'm going to see you on Tuesday night. God bless you. Hey, we want to thank you for joining us today for our live stream. If you are joining us via YouTube or Facebook, 
please make sure on Facebook to, to hit that like button as well as YouTube subscribe. We want to continue to push the word out to you. We have daily devotionals that will be coming out and we want you to stay connected. God is doing something through the epicenter of worship. And again, thank you for joining us today. May God bless you.